Hello everyone, DM Gashbat here, and I'm doing something I haven't done in a while, which is a video diary of a terrain project. In this case, I'm going to be making a monster's nest for a Warhammer scenario I'm doing. This is supposed to be a big monster nest, like a chimera or a wyvern or a griffin or something like that. And I want it to sit on top of this mountain terrain piece that I had previously made. So the first thing I went and got is I went to Michael's local craft store and I got myself this. This is a two pack of vine bird nests with artificial eggs. Originally I got these for the eggs, but I found out they were way too large, but I'm gonna try and make the nests work for this. So it's a, anyway, I would have not bought it, but it was on a super clearance discount. So I went ahead because it was really cheap. And I got a nest like this. These are really common. I found it in the floral section. People use these for their flower arranging projects, I guess. And so what I did was I went and put it on this piece of scrap 3 16 hardboard that I had lying around. And I wanted to make a base for it so I could hot glue it down on that. And so I drew a circle around the nest big enough so that it went, um, you know, it, it was larger than the nest itself, but smaller than the mountaintop. So that it's all gonna fit on like that. And I cut that out with my jigsaw. And so now the next step is I'm going to take my Dremel with the sandpaper tip and I'm just going to smooth down the edges. And then I'm going to hot glue down the nest on top like that. And so I will check in again when I've made some progress. So here you see I've done the next stage of the project. I took the nest and actually trimmed quite a bit of it down. So I just took some regular scissors and I clipped a lot off the bottom so it sits a little bit flatter, makes it look a little more like a large nest sitting kind of flat on the ground. I also went and just trimmed up some of the sides, made them a little bit more regular, make it look less like a, like a wreath that's been wrapped around. And I took some sticks and roots that I found outside and just tucked those in areas too. And I kind of like the look of it so far. So it's all just been hot glued onto this base. And some of the looser areas I just put a dab of hot glue in there just to keep it a little bit more solid. So the next thing that I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this spackling paste, this filler, this all-purpose filler type stuff. I'm going to get it really, really wet. I'm going to add a lot of water to it and I'm going to drip it down in here. I'm going to make this a little bit more solid just to give it, yeah, just to solidify it a little bit, maybe give a flatter area for miniatures to stand on because, you know, you want your nest to be occupied. And then I'm probably gonna take some, some coarse material. I'm gonna add some rocks to the base around here because this is gonna sit on top of a rocky mountain. So I picked out some, some medium-sized rocks and I got my sand and I got this coarser rock type stuff. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that around here and I'm probably gonna sprinkle some stuff in there as well. And we will check in once I've done that. We are back and the project is coming along. The putting the spackle inside the nest actually worked out a little bit better than I expected. So I just put big gobs of it in between the branches there and then took a really wet brush and swept it across the stick so it all sort of ran down into the thing. And I made that, I think that made kind of a more solid surface in there. Made it look like it's a bit more littered with debris and things like that. While it was still wet, I sprinkled a little sand in there. Then I went and I hot glued some rocks onto the base around the nest. And then I went and took more of that spackle and I just made a more uneven surface, make it look a bit more rocky around the edge. And then when that was dry, I went and I glued down some of the coarse sand, just put a big layer of glue down and sprinkled some of the coarse sand down. And when that was dry, I put another layer of glue down and sprinkled in some of the lighter sand. But anyway, that took a lot of drying time. I could have done that a little bit more efficiently, but it's actually turning out all right, I think. And then I took, went and I took another little step there and I went into my bits box and I found some bones. These mostly come from the Crypt Ghoul sprue. I just sprinkled around a couple in various places to add some former victims to the monster nest. It is Warhammer, you gotta have at least one skull. I try and take it easy on the skulls because I do use them for other projects, but I got one skull in there. So now the next step is going to be uh, spritzing it. So just spray painting on an undercoat in black, and then I'm gonna start painting.
Here we have our monster nest after a good base coat of GW Chaos Black spray paint. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our lovely craft paints. I use Delta Ceram coat. Anyway, I'm going to start with burnt umber mixed with black and I'm just going to slop that all over most of this thing because most of this is going to be brown and that's going to be my, my base coat for all this. I'm going to make it really kind of runny so it seeps into all the cracks. I'm just going to go over the whole thing. After that has dried, I'm then just going to take straight black, going to water that down even more, and I'm going to do a black wash over the whole thing. We'll check back in after that point. So here's the project after the coat of dark brown and the black wash. I know it still basically looks black. So after this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do five levels of dry brush because I always do five highlights on everything that I do. It's just a force of habit. Uh, anyway, the next, the, the first big highlight that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a really heavy dry brush of burnt umber, followed by successively lighter dry brushes of brown iron oxide, spice brown, and then I'm going to mix a little trail tan into this, and I'm going to do two more highlights of that mix there, and we will check in after that. <laughs> After the final highlight on the brown, I actually went a little bit higher up on these highlights. I went up through trail tan and then added a little bit of white to it. Uh, when I was done with it, I thought it needed to look a little bit more dried out and old, so I went a little bit lighter. Now the next step is to do the exact same thing with the rocky ground on the base. I'm going to give it a base coat of charcoal, then go up through some lighter grays, rain gray and drizzle gray. And then, yeah, and then it'll be a black wash after the base coat of charcoal. And then we'll check back in. So here we have our nest after the gray. This again was a charcoal base coat washed with black, then highlighted up through rain gray and then through drizzle gray. And I think that looks pretty good. This is almost done. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to pick out the bones. We're going to use an ivory color. The way I start ivory is I start with a bright yellow mixed with a spice brown. And then I start adding small bits, oh, excuse me. Then I uh, do a burnt umber wash. And while I'm doing a burnt umber wash of the bones, I'm going to add little splotches of it around the rocks just to add some variation of color and, and make it look more like ground covering. Anyway, so then we're going to go and add a little ivory into our bright yellow and spice brown mix. I'm just going to add more and more ivory until we get a nice bone color. And so that'll be the next step. And with that, the nest is all painted up and ready to go. The last thing I'm going to do is put a little spray sealant on it and it'll be ready for the table. Now I'm going to talk about spray sealant a little bit real quick. Normally for terrain, I use GW's Purity Seal or the Army Painter kind of um, spray varnish, the matte stuff. But Gorilla Miniatures Games was talking about this right here, this Rust-Oleum Universal Clear Top Coat. Anyway, so I tried that out on my last terrain projects. I don't know if I really like it better. I think it goes on a little thick. A little, you know, maybe a, it looks changes the color maybe a little bit more than I would like. Not too much. I mean, they're all going to change the color a little bit, 
but I don't know if I really like this stuff so much. It is a lot cheaper. My last can of the expensive stuff, the Army Painter stuff, just I left it sitting out too long and it went bad and I can't use it. So I am going to use this stuff again. It works fine, but if you've got the money, you can use the other stuff. Anyway, I'll come back when that is all done and I'll talk about the project as a whole. And here we have the completed terrain project all ready for the next game. So normally when I make terrain projects, uh, the one thing that I really don't want to have happen is for the thing to look exactly like what it is. But in this case, this thing is made out of sticks and rocks, and I think that's okay because it's supposed to look like sticks and rocks. So I'm actually pretty happy about how it came together. Now, this was a pretty quick project. It didn't take me that long to do. It was extremely cheap. I made it mostly from scraps, and of course that that nest thing that I bought for like $2. Uh, as a, It occurs to me that I probably got it at Joanne's Fabrics rather than Michael's, but I guess that doesn't really matter because you can find these things pretty much at any craft store. It's probably not even necessary to get a nest. You could probably build this just with sticks that you found in your backyard. Again, the details that I like the most are really those sticks and roots that I that I clipped and kind of tucked in the thing to add some variation in the thickness and just some irregular parts to the nest itself. It would take more time, but that's okay. Yeah, so it was that nest. It's just some sticks. It's just some rocks, sand, the little bit of hardboard, and a couple of bones. And there it is. It's all done. Hopefully I'll be able to play my next Warhammer 6th edition solo play skirmish scenario soon. You can see some of the models set up for that. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, go ahead and leave them down below. I will see you on the next one.